We're in our series. And all of you new, new first-timers and new people, y'all, y'all, I guess, y'all fill out the comment call. We want to know y'all here because we know that after this series, some of y'all never come back until... <laughs> I want to know who you are so I can make sure I email and call you and send you letters and stuff and let you know when our next series is coming. Um, Y'all can go online and sign up for their uh, No Regrets Conference next year. It's open. Y'all can sign up for it now. Um, Last week, let's show our appreciation for this panel. We got Tony. All right, gentlemen, speak in the house. We got David. And we got Rocky. Um, These gentlemen represent um, various generations. um, And obviously, uh, we have different cultural backgrounds, ethnicities. um, And I also want to acknowledge that neither of us are uh, widowers. And I know that there are widowers who are present. And it's not something to overlook. We do acknowledge your presence. um, And I appreciate your feedback. Uh, We... Uh, providing various perspectives from a man's point of view because we don't we're not short of hearing and receiving the woman's point of view we just not short of it we hear it and we've heard it and we're ready to receive it again and some more next week but uh, it's so good that we had to do it twice Um, and last week we had dove on in and we talked about a few things and and by way of review and then we'll pick up and then we will Um, address a few questions amongst ourselves, and then we will allow for some questions. Uh, Do know that the Lord is moving and shaping some things. Um, I saw a movie yesterday, and that movie has encouraged me to do, extend this series or to do another series. I'll tell you about that later. Uh, Last week, to my surprise, Rocky made mention of how, for him, one thing that he was looking for was a woman Um, And we don't confess to be um, experts of anything. I think amongst us, we all have made our own share of mistakes, correct? Correct. And we become experts by default, by by so many things that we've done wrong that we can be able to speak to those things. Um, And also we're sharing the perspective of several men who have spoken to us. But he talked last week, he mentioned on how he was looking, one thing that he was encouraged by is a woman that who would... uh, encourage him or challenge him to be the best uh, uh, version of himself and a woman who would make him want to submit. And when he said that word submit, I almost lost it. Um, I almost lost it because you don't hear men, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't hear men talking about themselves or husbands or, or boyfriends uh, talking about submission from the perspective of them submitting to uh, the the wife or the woman. Usually when we hear the word submission, it's usually, woman, you need to submit to the man. That's what the Bible says. Uh, when we are walking down the aisle, the vows that we are about to confess, the preacher, you know, many times lets us know that women obey your husbands. Uh, this is what the Bible tells us. And man, you know, love your wives. True. The Bible talks about woman respect your husband because that's one thing that men really thrive on. And it talks about men love your wife because they need the intimacy. But we fail to look at Ephesians 5, 21, where it says both man, both woman, both husband, both wife submit to one another. Right. And so we talked about that and how it's important that before we go talking about submission and using it out of context, that we first um, are attached to someone who we feel encouraged and don't feel it's a challenge to submit to them, meaning that I think you said you don't have to win all the arguments, knowing that uh, some battles you don't have to fight. Um, And I think some men who, some husbands who have been married for some time will tell you, I don't let, some some, some battles I just don't fight. She's right. And although he know he's right, he just learned the wisdom that that's just, you know, my wife said this and this is what we're going to do. We talked about submission. Um, and I think it's important that we keep that in mind. So before um, a woman or before a man, and we'll talk about that a little more about that submission when we deal with the last question for today and what that really looks like. And I think 
uh, both man, both woman, husband, both wife, uh, girlfriend, boyfriend. I think this is a conversation that you have uh, because it's good to uh, interrogate the text and it's good to be able to discover one's perspective when it comes to submission. And submission doesn't mean weakness. Submission also doesn't mean domination. And so many, many men or many people have used that out of context. We talked about uh, submission. um, And y'all feel free to interject at any given time. We also talked from a question I think many of you all appreciated. Uh, The question that Scott had gave us was, why um, have you ever pulled back? Why do men pull back from relationships? When you're engaging a man and a woman and you're engaging each other and things seem to be going well, seem in your eyes, woman, women, everything is going well, you know, everything is going well. And then all of a sudden he seems to to begin to pull back or he seems to shut down or even in your marriages, um, but more so in relationships when the man, the woman, why is it that men, what are some reasons men uh, walk away from relationships. And a couple of things that we got from these men that I took notes of is one, um, I remember Tony mentioned, he said, it could just be that the timing is wrong. As simple as that. There's not an algorithm. There's not, it's not uh, rocket science. It's not geometry. It's just the fact that it could just be that the timing is wrong. It's just not the right timing. Um, And I know many times we don't want to hear that. Women don't want to hear that. Timing is wrong. It's just not the right season. Um, He perceives that you're not ready. I know that you think you're ready. I know that you think everything is going well, but there's blind spots you have. And for someone like myself or someone like Tony or, or David, I know he mentioned that you can just pay attention. And there's just things that a man can see or a man may pay attention to because we're thinkers by nature and, and we're an analytical and he may just perceive that you're, that you're not ready and find, he will find himself pulling back. Another thing is um, we talked about um, Rocky. It could just be that he's not interested in you and he just doesn't want to hurt your feelings. And so he'll tell you that he's just not ready or, you know, it's just you know, not ready for a relationship. And, and sometimes, like I said, it's, it's priorities. Mm-hmm. Sometimes uh, you can be hanging out with somebody and you, y'all can be feeling each other when you first start out. Sure. But during that whole honeymoon period, you know, it's always, everything's all gravy during that time. But then as you, as a relationship carries on and you start to know and find out more and more things about somebody, then you start to really analyze whether or not this person is worth me investing so much time into when I have other priorities. Mm -hmm. So it could be your career. It could be a a number of other things. It Mm -hmm. could just be hobbies that you like to do things to give you peace of mind. And you're like, man, I'm sacrificing a lot of this time hanging out with somebody that I know eventually, you know, this is going to come to a head. Because I'm not really, you know, like I said, invested. I'm not really feeling her on a long term type of deal. So I may need to, like, break this off now Mm -hmm. in a cordial fashion before her feelings start to develop more. And I know that this is not going anywhere. Hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all have y'all turn next week. You know, if you got something you want to write, just write it down. You know, that's that's one of the problems, you know, just listen. You know, just listen. You know, I got some men here right now. See, see, that's what I'm talking about. I can't never say nothing. When I say something, she just, oh, she started cutting me off. What's she say? No, no. Keep getting out. Not the microphone. No, 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 no. That microphone. Not today, no, no. boo. Bring the gentlemen no, are going to speak. I'm sorry. Not, not yet. Not, hold You'll that. Get your put, turn. Hold, put a pause on that. Hold on, hold on. Right. Hold that. We laugh, we joke. I can joke with certain people because I have a relationship with certain people. But no, but honestly, honestly. It goes both ways, but that'll be the first thing that'll cause a man to shut down is when a man trying to share something and trying to talk and you begin to over talk him. And then you wonder why he goes into a cave, into seclusion, and he doesn't talk anymore. No, it's not right or wrong. Let's operate with grace. 
Right. Because I do understand, because if I was back there and a woman was saying something that, that reminded me of something, I'm like, hold on, see, you, you, you're wrong. I, I want to correct you too. Only thing is that I got the microphone, right? right. <laughs> so voices are valuable. Do not take me interjecting as what she's saying is not valid because I'm sure that what she had to say has validity to it. But I do want to interject and let you know one of the first things that will cause a man to stop talking is that when he does talk, you do not listen to what he's saying. Now, you can go back and you can say the same thing when you talk. He does the same thing. Absolutely. But just here, this is the issue. We never hear. We never listen to learn. We listen to respond. Right? Right, right. So let's listen to learn, write your notes, and then let's come back when it's your turn to begin to converse. Amen? Right. Amen. And so, but this is what we do. This is what we do. You take your notes and so that when it's the women's chance to begin talking, I don't have to go looking for questions. I don't have to go looking for responses. You've already submitted them to Keisha or to Scott, and we'll already have a bucket list of things that we need to discover, right? Right, right. I mean, discuss. And, and I mean, that's one of my points of growth uh, right there. That was a great example of that because uh, joining this situation and uh, being a part of the Word Fast and listening to you talk about humility and gentleness, mm -hmm. like situations like that, that was one of those things. I told you I'm super confrontational. Mm -hmm. So... That's, but now I've reached that point where I realize I don't, I don't know everything, so I have to respect somebody else's opinion. And that's a part of being humble, like knowing that my word is not the end all, be all. My, it's just my opinion. It's my truth. I'm giving you my truth. Other men in here, you may get a million different other stories, but that's my truth. That's I'm, the reason why I pull back sometimes. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to jump in. I ain't, I ain't there yet. The pastor <laughs> ain't there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be honest because I upload this to the world for the world to see and I can't be saying stuff and then people, you know, my past or other people who know me be listening, be like, you lying? You just tell me. <laughs> no, I got to be, I got to be truthful. I got a responsibility to tell y'all the truth. I ain't there yet. I'm trying to tell you because gentleness is the one thing that the Lord knows I need more of. Men need the gift of gentleness, Right? We need to learn how to be. We're, we're, it's, no, it's no question time. It, it ain't time for question. Just want y'all to know, Scott, I need you to come this way. <laughs> You're drifting. You're drifting. You're drifting. I need, I, need, I need more gentleness, right? Men, we need more gentleness. And it's hard because I can know that I'm right about something. And you go to cutting me off. Then, uh, hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lord working on me with that, right? You know. It's when even when I know I'm right, I don't have to be right. Because I think in our private conversations, we were talking, look, look, the seasoned veterans just letting us just talk. They're just letting us just talk. Let's let them use their energy, you know, let them get it all out. You know, they are young tenderonies. But look, that's it. so it's one thing that I've learned is that even when I'm right, because uh, Rocky was talking about it, you can win the argument and lose a relationship. And so many times, especially for men, because men, we think we're logical thinkers. We think first, feel second. Women are emotion. They, they feel first, they think second. They're, they're, we, we think in straight lines, A to, to B. Women, you know, you know, it's A. And so it's just a different way. And we communicate. And we'll talk about that in the week after next. But that's something that I have to wrestle with because the low, the, the low patience and lack of gentleness. I'm not the meanest person alive. It's just that, you know, just got a little wiggle room. I got a little tolerance. Um, but the Lord, you there, but I ain't there yet. And so I just want to let everybody out there in YouTube world know that. Um, but another thing, um, one reason why God pulls back is because you don't know this, but his, his heart can be tied up elsewhere. Right. You can meet somebody. You can find that you have chemistry to some degree, not spend a lot of time, but you can be interested and you can just be wondering why, you know, he hadn't made a move or why this isn't going anywhere. And the truth of the matter is, if the timing is not wrong, excuse me, if, you know, he perceives that you're not ready, um, if perhaps he's not interested, it could be that his heart is tied up somewhere else and. That's just really what it is. It has nothing to do with you. He could be interested in you. He could be attracted to you. 
But if his heart is tied up somewhere else, you might want to be appreciative of the fact that he didn't pull, he didn't take his shot. He didn't take the shot, you know, because it's out of respect that he hadn't taken a shot, you know, at you. You know, so all men don't shoot all the shots that they get, um, opportunities they have. The last thing we talked about was eagerness. Your eagerness for a relationship is causing uh, you all to move at a fast pace or you move at the fast pace. And so men often will feel like there is an ultimatum. You've given them an ultimatum. Either we get married or nothing at all. And many times women will operate from their biological time clock that's forcing them to move faster or because friends have gotten married and, and so it's forcing them to feel like they got to move it quicker. And sometimes your pace is not necessarily God's pace, it's just the timeline, your, your romantic timeline that you've put upon the relationship. And that will be one thing by itself that will cause a man to just be like, no, nah, I... He will pump his brakes because you're moving too fast, right? But it doesn't mean that you don't have the right to check him on his emotional pace. It doesn't mean that you can't ask him, you know, where is this going? You can't legitimately check him on the pace of your relationship, but you got to make sure that you're not, you're not subscribing him to the pace of something that is personal with you. You just got this, you got this timeline or this is something that you believe you've prayed through and you know that it's been seven years and he ain't said nothing. That's a whole different conversation. <laughs> but if it's seven months or whatever, you know, this, this, all right. Um, Are you ready pick... for me to interject, Pastor? Or not yet. What, what you, you reminded gotta... me something of last week where we left off. Where we, where, where we leave off it got a little, you insisted that I get a pen and write it down from where we left off last week. And I said, no, brother, I got it. I know this. I will not forget this thing started to, let's just say, heat up a little bit, HSC, with the uh, how does sex relate to what we're discussing today? I, re I didn't need to write it down. I got it. I got it. See, I'm hot. I'm heat. I'm ready. Am I, is it too soon? Am I, should I, should I wait it? Not just right now. Hey, Scott. <laughs> Scott, you already gave a sermon. And now you're going to check me on the fact that we need to talk about the role sex plays when it comes to chilling. And hanging out. I, had, I was going to talk about something that had to do with sex, but it was something we didn't pick up from last week. Just a minute. Can I, can I, can I, can I share that real quick? Let's bring it. Hey, sweating, soon you start sweating. talking about last week, everybody's like, yes, yes, yes. I know where I'm going, y'all. Just give me. We talk from the, we ask the question, what are some things men look for in women? Right? Uh, we ask our perspective. I think um, David shared, you know, some things, especially he's looking for someone who really has God in their life. God is first. And we're grateful that the Lord has put someone in, in his life. Um, and so we're praying blessings over, over that covenant uh, at, in this season. Um, but the rest of us didn't talk about what are some things that we look for uh, when it comes to what are some things we look for in women? What are some things we look for or some things men look for uh, when it comes to uh, women? You, you might want to listen to this part. And so then we'll go into what does chilling mean and whether or not sex plays a role in chilling. Are you chilling and still having sex? Is that a part? You know, we're going to talk about sex. y'all. So we're going to talk about it right now. All right, what are some things we look for in relations in, in women? Yeah, I want to. Anybody want to get the hot mic? Yeah, there you go, Tony. Tony, yeah, come on, Tony. All right, well, uh, I mean, there's various things. I mean, it's not just, just one thing. I mean, uh, you look at uh, appearance, you look at uh, the strength in a woman, uh, you look at just the overall personality of the person. Uh, there, there are many things when, when you are looking at what you're trying to figure out and, and what you really want in a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not a one-dimensional thing. Okay. And, you know, that's, that's kind of the way uh, I view it. You okay. Know? It's, uh, Say more about that appearance. Well, how important is appearance to you, Tony? We got Let me this, put you man. on the spot. We got this, Scott. We got this. We <laughs> Scott, I'm going to be honest Damn, with you. I got the SCX. The, I got 
The alone. first sorry, game. Sorry. Alone. We we, we gonna we gotta be honest. We we try, we trying to be honest. We gonna they gonna help some some men out here. Well, the first thing the first thing from the start is gonna be the appearance. That's gonna be number one. You know, as well as not just for a man, but for a woman too, because at that point, that's all you have. You know, you you haven't gotten a chance to really get to know them or anything in detail. I mean, how much does so, that appearance play though for guys? Though, how much does I, appearance of a woman play for for well, them? I feel like that's that's, that's Honestly, man, that's the most important yeah. piece because that's the conversation starter. Right. Like, that's the point of attraction. I don't meet women that are – I don't approach you if I don't like what I see. Mm -hmm. Physically, all of that. I don't approach you if I don't like what I see. So, uh, I mean, if I don't like what I see, we can be Facebook friends or something like that. But uh, – but. Preach to the people, brother. I agree, right? Preach to I the agree. people, brother. It's hello, goodbye. Hey, but but you talking about Facebook friends though? I'm just saying though. I'm just saying though. I can look at your Facebook because I'm a I'm a I, I'm a FBI when it comes to Facebook, <laughs> and I look at your Facebook and all your social media, and you can look one way, but then right. You know, but I'm, I'm not, no, but what I'm saying is I give her my Facebook information if I if I don't like what I see because I've seen you in person now, so you can't catfish me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But but what I'm saying is it's the main point. The main point of attraction to me is like the physical appearance. I can't see you across the room and be like, man, she looks like she got a great personality. I need to go meet her. I can't do that. I don't, I don't have those type of abilities. So it has to be something that I see that I like that makes me put forth that effort to go meet that a, individual. A man, a man, attraction, being attractive is subjective. Everybody can see something different. Right. What I find beautiful in a woman and her physical appearance you know, can be totally different than it what than what you what it you can like. be, and I mean, it's not as vain. I mean, it's not as shallow as no, you think. It's, right. it's it's important because I'll be honest with you, men like to know that their woman or their that other men other men like to know that other men find their wom woman mm -hmm. or wife attractive. Period. If other men find my woman attractive, you know, that just, you know, that just, you know, that just, you know. Well, Isaac, I can't say that I 100 percent agree with that because sure. I would say a secure man likes to know that other men find his woman attractive. All right. Well, well, you know, my bad. I was just speaking from a secure man's perspective, right. you know. <laughs> You can't one up me. You can't one up me. I'm gonna come back. That's I get the last pastor, word, y'all. That's my pastor. I got the microphone. No, it's just not true. No, that's legit. That's legit. But my point is, is is this is, good? Okay. What man would want someone that nobody else is interested in? Exactly. Well, well, I mean, there are some men who that just you get to a certain season of your life that that's just you know, I, I literally it's not even a big deal. Like, a, a, you get to a certain season in your life, <laughs> men literally looking for the character character alone you can nobody can be attracted so it's not necessarily for most men the physical attractiveness is what you know that's what keeps him in beast mode that's one thing that keeps him in beast mode that's not the only thing it's just to say that for for men that is something that plays a role that's something because we, we talk about how yes you know it says cleave to your wife yes you chase after a woman but you want to be chasing after your wife even after you marry her right. and she has to give you something right. to chase right right you know and so it, 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 it's many things it's just saying that we normally on main stages we won't have that conversation but the truth of the matter is i'm just going to bless a husband today and bless a man who's in a relationship today is that you know a man wants to yeah. to 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 know that it's one fear that a man has is that when I marry you, how much are you going to change? How much is she going to change if I, if, I, if I give her a ring? How, it's not if, it's just how much, you know? And so he, he asks him, he won't, he won't say nothing to you about it unless y'all get that real tight relationship. Otherwise, it's, it's, he just wonders, you know? And so, because women say, well, yeah, we've been together. He don't give me flowers anymore. He don't do any of this anymore. And then he'd be like, but you don't dress up anymore. You don't do none of that anymore either. So it goes both ways. Right. We're, not, we're not castigating or demeaning women. I'm trying to get you into the mind of a man. That's the whole purpose why we're up here, right? right. It's not right or wrong. So you're going to say something? Yeah. Wisdom, wisdom speaking. Well, you know, when you talk about relationships, uh, the very first thing that you uh, address is what that person looks like on both sides. Mm -hmm. sure. And if there's not a natural attraction, mm -hmm. uh, I call it synergy. 
You've got to have uh, something there between both of you. Mm -hmm. It makes no difference what they look like. Sure. Not to me. Sure. I have so little time left, not like these guys. Uh -huh. You know, so sure. you know, I, I have to just cut to the chase, you know, sure. and take what I can get. And as far as... <laughs> He's on the clock. I didn't, uh, he's on the clock. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. No, no, and you, and no, you know no, who no, I'm talking to, no, right? No, no. I, I no, know, I know good and well you didn't mean yeah, that yeah, that, that yeah, way. No, yeah. I, but that's what I was saying is that even for me, as we talked a, a few years ago, we talked about what's your list. And we talked about how the list of the things that you want in a marriage and what you expect for and all that, even after you get married, it should not look the same it looked when you were 16 years old. It should mature. Your list should mature. There's some, th there's some vain things that I was wanting, wanting out of a wife or a woman that, I, come on, Isaac, after, after you get a certain age, you start like, you know what, ah, that's not even important, you know. Or, that's not as important as it used to be when I was 20 years old. And so as you mature, as you get older, things should mature and the things right. that you expect out of your wife even after you get married. That's exactly right. And none of us, none of us look like we did when we were 20. And it's going to change. It's going to change for all of us. So we need to expect it. Expect that to happen and accept it. You have to speak for yourself. I look. <laughs> all right, yeah. I, 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 so, 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 get this though. Get this though. Statistics. Statistics say that men look for three things in women, and especially in marriages. Write this down. This is going to bless you. Don't get all super spiritual on me. They look for peace, sex, and approval. Peace, blah, 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 bless somebody. Sex and approval. This is what the statistics say these are three things that men want. But then also there's two, there's two top things according to statistics. There's two top complaints that husbands, that men have. Either when they're getting divorced or when they are going through marriage counseling. It's two things. It's a relationship. These are two things. These are two complaints. It's been too much fighting and not enough sex. Y'all missing something. Y'all keep hearing the word sex and y'all missing what I'm saying. Um, we're talking about physical appearance, right? We're talking about, we, I, I appreciate that. I value that. I, I, you know, I want to... I want to have something that's been captured my eyes, right? Um, but a man will choose a woman who is less attractive. You know how you, you know the question you had? Well, I, I looked at, his, at, at, at my ex and the girl he dated and the girl he with, and he don't look nothing like me. A man will choose a woman who is less attractive, doesn't have much money in the bank, Career isn't as advanced because she has less drama. One thing that drives a man insane, and you can say the same thing about men, but we're not demeaning, I'm just I'm, I'm sharing something with you, is the conflict. It's the too much fighting. Is the drama. And so we are naturally gravitate toward a place and a person that is much more peaceful. If it's less, if, if she's peaceful, not as much bickering, can't please you, always, if it's less of that, a man will, will compromise what he wants in a home. What do you, man, she can't, she can't cook? Oh, we can teach her how to cook. We can work on that. And, 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 and it's not, before you send me a lot of emails. <laughs> I need you all to understand, things that I share, you hear it, and then you immediately have a, 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 a response as if I'm talking directly to you. You have to ask yourself, why are you so hypersensitive about that? And it's not me castigating or demeaning you, there's something there that is unresolved. And so I, I'm not trying to talk to any woman in particular. You probably have had a man that told you that you're just full of drama and you always complain, you're always bickering. And as soon as I said conflict, you was like, you, did, and then you have a rebuttal. I'm not talking to you. I'm just trying to get you into the mind of a man. Drama, conflict, will cause a man to go the opposite direction. And you, and, and, is, is that true? Yeah, that's true. And, and, and it reminds me, you bringing up cooking, that reminds me of something that you talked about uh, I can't remember when it was. I'm stroking your ego a little bit, though. That's right. Um, 
I remember you mentioned it one day. Uh, people always say the quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Mm. And you said, nah, scratch that. The quickest way to a man's heart is through respect. Yeah. Showing him respect. That's a yeah. big, I think that's huge with most men. It's being respected. Somebody recognizing and acknowledging what you bring to the table. Yep. Recognizing and acknowledging your, your mind, your intelligence. Yep. The things that you do. Yep. Just all that it is to be a man when a woman respects that. And that's, that brings me back to my point of that's the main thing I look for in a woman is somebody who can make me feel like I want to submit. Because when a woman respects me yep. the way that I feel like I should be respected, mm -hmm. then that makes me want to be super submissive to her. It, like, it goes hand in hand. It's like, man, if she can respect me and, and approach me the way that she approached me, talk to, the, talk to me the way she, yeah. that she talks to me, respect my opinion, respect the things that I say, respect how I feel about things, then there's no reason why I can't put this woman first in everything that I do. And, and that's why I said one of the things is approval. Approval. Will she approve of me? Will she respect me? Will she appreciate me? That's one of the things. And I'm, I'm, he's going he's gonna, to, Tony's going to say something. I'm going to, I, I, we, we got something to talk about. Yeah, yeah. You, you spend your day pretty much on your job with drama. You do not want to come home to drama. You know, home is where you want to come and you want to relax. It, it, it's a sanctuary. It is. And when you have to come home to drama, you, you begin to back away. You, you begin not to really want to come home, you know. Man, to spend time at the gym. Yeah. You, you find alternative things to do rather than to go home and to listen to somebody that's going to nitpick you about every little detail thing. Now, I know that some women right now are like, ah, I got some sleep. <laughs> Hear this, though. And we'll talk about it, you know. There's a language that both men and women speak. And when you learn the language, you unlock a door, right? And so there can be something that you want to talk about that the man, you gave him a honey-do list, and he still ain't get that honey-do list. But it's how you present that honey-do list is if you learn to speak his language, you can get him to do whatever it is that you want him to do. But, but this is all important. Um, and I was going to share, just for women, just so you know, the, two, the things that women, um, the two complaints that women have is um, he isn't there for me emotionally and there isn't enough intimacy and connection, right? And so those are two complaints that women have. And the three things that they look for, three things is attention, intimacy, and connection. Those are three things, now, among many other things. But you've heard us talk about career. You heard us talk about respect. There's something important that I want to talk about as soon as we address his question about uh, when it comes to chilling. And we're talking about chilling, right? We're talking about chilling, right? You know, all right, so t today, you know, it's chilling, you know, and we left last week talking about, all right, so when you chill, what does that consist of? What does chilling consist of? Netflix and chill. What is what does that actually mean? And is that something? And, and then I was like, is sex involved in, ch in chilling? I was asking Rocky that, and Rocky said it's 1046. And so we want to go ahead and redirect that back to Rocky. <laughs> you got it, Rocky? Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. It's, it's, I, it's kids in here today. That's all right. Uh, so yeah, chilling. Um, I mean, modern day chilling. <laughs> no, nah, honestly, though, honestly, modern day chilling. I mean, is sex involved? Of course, some really good sex sometimes, and that uh, that kind of confuses you a little bit. Uh, and that's one of the things I'm trying to get away from because, like, sometimes, uh, you mentioned it at the beginning of the, yep. the thing. Sometimes it's so nice you have to do it twice yep. or. <laughs> I don't wanna, know where I said that, but I'll support him anyway. <laughs> I said that somewhere. No, no, no. No, yeah. when you were talking about yeah, us doing I, I, the part I, I, two. I, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, sometimes yeah. you have to get a part two, three, four, uh, yep. five. Yep. So, and and it, it gets kind of confusing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that, and that kind of confuses women at times because sometimes you get attached to that. Mm -hmm. And then when you do what we said, I like how these questions are really connected. That's when you, when you realize, hey, okay, this was... Our relationship was really built off something shallow yep. because we've been chilling and hanging out. And that's been that suffices for right now. But 
as far as being fulfilled, mm -hmm. when you realize that, then you're like, hey, I need to pull it back a little bit because I've done all I can do here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. So that's one of the things that I'm really working at and really have been working at. And sometimes you fall to a little bit. But uh, that, 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 that confuses things for both, both parties. I think women sometimes get the misconception that you're confusing them and you're doing it intentionally. Mm -hmm. But they might not realize what they got. So both, uh, both parties are at fault, though. Both parties are at fault. Although men, and just hear me, although men are usually the ones that are attributed to be, you know, of playing the games. Right, or right, right. Like, I always say women control the tempo, men control the temperature. The man is the one who's going to propose to you. He determines how hot the relationship gets, if he's going to take it to that next level, the temperature. But the tempo, the woman controls how fast or how slow. If you say no, and it's no, but if you say yes, you're not going to find too many men that are going to be like, all right, you know, no. You say yes, but no. And so um, you, you will, but I'm saying that there's a twofold relationship. There's a twofold accountability here. But he said something is that, and then you get to a point where you're like, um, I don't, you see a man is like, I don't see this going much, you know. And then a woman is like, hold on, you know. Men, we compartmentalize. We can compartmentalize things. We can put this in this file cabinet, this in this file cabinet, this in this file cabinet. Women don't function like that. And so when we begin to introduce sex into this scenario, I'm talking, we're having a real conversation. Then men, we can compartmentalize. And so once as we begin to have sex and, 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 and cross certain boundaries, as you were saying, it's no longer chilling. It, it's not chilling anymore. It's you, called, you've taken it to a whole different level. You've gone to sex and one. Yeah, it said chilling and you know, one. It's called chilling chillin and plus one. And so the truth of the matter is, is that chilling today is the pre-screening to dating. The truth of the matter is you don't like it, but there are a lot of things have changed. We're nostalgic about certain things. We want certain things to remain the same, but then we don't want some things to change and we want other things to change. But we used to date in, in a few years ago, it should be go steady. You know, I never used that term, but they say they're going steady. You know, it wasn't necessarily dating, but they were going steady. But now it's chilling, and chilling can go into the auspice of, you know, getting coffee too. You know, whatever the case is. But chilling, in many cases, a guy is trying to determine whether or not we have what it takes to actually date. Exactly. It, like chilling, chilling is like a gateway to a relationship. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. But um, I mean, you can be not to say that chilling is just always chilling. Like I'm Absolutely. saying, sometimes you can be chilling with somebody and then the vibe is there. The connection Absolutely. is there and it turns into something serious. People have gotten married. They right. chilled. But you have a, you have a but, responsibility to manage it, though. You exactly. Have a, you have there is nobody putting a gun in anybody's hand. You have a responsibility to manage, you know, the degree, I know if you say, I want to be courted. Well, you demand whatever you demand. But if you want to be chilling or if you want to relate, I, people say, well, what is courting? And I know we want courting, but then we, we want courting. Ah, don't go there. We want courting because courting is such a nostalgic term and this is what it used to. But then when we start talking about roles, when it comes to roles in the home and women having certain roles and men having certain roles, we don't want that. Or, you know, so there's certain things that we want to pull from the past, but then there's other things we want to leave in the past. And so we're in a different culture. Culture has shifted. And so there's certain things that we have to be mindful of. And I talk more about what I mean when we start talking about courting and start talking about things that have changed in the past. But chilling, I know you already knew. Should it include sex? No. But does it often include sex? Yes. And then after it, not, it doesn't always, I'm, I'm saying it doesn't always, but when it does, then Women almost use it as a manipulation tool because if I give this to you, then I know that I'll get you to make the next step. And then you underestimate the power of the man being able to compartmentalize things. Right. And, when you, and, when you like a, and when you're a good dude, because I don't want women to think a lot of fellas are just sure. bad guys. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it's always, oh, he was just after this. A lot of times guys approach you with great intentions and then you guys end up going there intimately uh, 
And sure. then the guy, like I said, you realize, hey, this is not really. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's not what I thought it was. And a lot of times that's what that, that's what causes a guy to linger mm -hmm. or to drag that process out because he is a good guy. And he feels like, man, if I tell her I don't really want to do this anymore, she's going to think this was what you this had, was all you, about. You, you but never lied. Exactly. But the entire time he was really trying to establish something there, and but it just didn't to see happen. If this was right. something that so could sometimes actually, it's not yes, just sir. ill intentions. Yes, I, I think one of the things that, that we miss is in a, in a pre a premarital relationship is that you got to be like minded. You got to be after the same thing. Sure. You got to look forward to long, the long term. And as far as just dating or chilling, mm -hmm. uh, that can go either way. Mm -hmm. You know, you go long term or short term, and if it's not the right person with the right values, then yeah. you, you just go your other way. Uh, as far as premarital sex, uh, it, I go back to this. Is it, it's a man's responsibility, I think, uh, to – it takes two people to yep. have sex. And uh, at least it was in my day anyway. So uh, – <laughs> That's why we got wisdom on this That's stage. exactly right. That's exactly right. So, you know, if you look at, if you look at where sex plays a role in, in a relationship – I think it's a man's responsibility to hold tight to that and not and not let that relationship get to that point, uh, even though there's two people involved. Because Satan is already in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. He's waiting for you to come up, okay? And uh, you got to be strong with that. Uh, just follow God's word. But the other thing I want to say about, uh, about sex, uh, about the, the sexual relations of a couple, is that that's why they call it a honeymoon. Mm -hmm. You know, you consummate the marriage if it's to be, and you got to turn those those uh, those things through the marriage on the honeymoon. Otherwise, if you have sex, premarital sex, and you get married, you do the vows, but it comes it becomes an out of town opportunity to go play miniature golf. Mm -hmm. You know, you he speaks, and it's funner. It's a lot funner when you can take your vows and go have sex. You know, you could, you, could, you could shepherd the community. You know, I, I believe that they receive you far more than they receive me. I appreciate, I appreciate. Yeah, uh, but I'm not as good looking you know, as you are, you know, Isaac. I, I appreciate, I appreciate, David, what you have to say. Because they're going to have, we're going to ask the question in just a moment about what does, what does it mean to be a man? How do you define manhood? And what makes you what makes you feel like a man? And that's going to lead us down a rabbit hole. But we will need his perspective. We will need his perspective. And then our perspective to see how this is different. Because women, I want you to hear where I'm going to go with that. And, and how I believe we can reveal a conundrum that we have in the 21st century. Right? That we are refusing to necessarily talk about. And that we need to talk about. But... I want to mention something about this as we're talking about chilling. I think even if it doesn't include sex, here's the thing. On the, other, on the flip side, women, you have to be careful because women will easily, you, you don't have a monopoly on men taking advantage of you, men not wanting a relationship, men putting you. No, women will put a guy in a friend zone real quick. Watch this though. But... See, for women, it can be either codependency or cushioning. Two things. Codependency or cushioning. Codependency, you can allow guy, a guy into your space. You, you can know that guy is a little attracted to you, but you will keep him in your space because he provides his presence and he satisfies something for you emotionally. See, women, see, men, we need, we want sex, right? Women, you want sex too, but if you have an emotional attachment, that is satisfactory for you, right? You can last longer on an emotional attachment. That's why we talk about uh, infidelity. Infidelity also for women is more so that emotional attachment you have with that coworker you have at work, et cetera, et cetera. That's when it starts. But here, women will allow guy into a space, friend zone him. This guy, you come over, you ain't, you never gave him an inkling that you were interested or attracted to him, but he provides something for you. 
And he provides his presence. If you need something fixed, he'll come over and fix it. You know, he, all of the things that, are, that a husband would provide for you, but you have him in the friend zone and he's satisfying something for you emotionally. You refuse to address it. He may not address it. And so there's this codependent relationship because he's providing something for you. You provide something for him, all something for him, although he would want something more and he's hoping for something more. But you just keep him in that friend zone. But you would never not not keep him out of that friend zone. Now, you know what? I wouldn't. It's nine o'clock. Or, no, let's go to the movies. Not saying that if you go to the movies with a guy or with a girl, that's wrong. I'm just talking about that boundary of when that person provides exactly for you what somebody what what your husband would provide for you minus everything. We don't talk about that. And then the other part of the cushioning is that you'll keep a guy in the friend zone or keep a guy in your peripheral and keep him there waiting to see if something or someone better will come along. We don't talk about it, but it happens. I see it all the time. And so you're cushioning him and the cushioning is the plan B. You will settle for him if after three years you do not get the man that you've been praying to God for. I'm telling y'all the truth. That's why y'all laughing. And so, and, and so on one end we uh, look at a man and a man will put us in this situation and the man will not provide. You know, everything we said is accurate. But on the other, uh, on the other end... I know many of men who are in the friend zone right now. It's like, hey, man, why are we not talking about the friend zone? I know we're talking about women. I'm in the friend zone. How do I know this woman is interested? She know I'm interested, but she got me in the friend zone. I want to be a friend. And you've been and you're talking about I want a man of God, a man who loves God. And this man right here has been coming over, fixing your washing machine, fix the roof. He didn't fix everything. He's a man of God. And you're like, Lord, I want a man of God. I'm just going to keep him here, providing me what I need, that emotional attachment. And that satisfies you while you're looking for. Prince Charming, right? That's something that you also have to be mindful of. Are you going to say something? Yeah, just to take it a step further. I mean, uh, <clears throat> sometimes you get, sometimes men are motivated by the type of women that they deal with. I mean, I personally dealt with women. I mean, and women, uh, and this is, please don't take this the wrong way, but women are needy emotionally. Sure. Women need to feel wanted. They need to feel sure. desired. I've dealt with women that I felt like were worth not going into that chill mode with. Absolutely. And me waiting frustrated them mm -hmm. and they put pressure on me and became like obviously agitated with the fact that and, and would be like, why don't you touch me? I mm -hmm. feel like our relationship is platonic. And they complained about that. And sure, it's like, sure, sure. Like I'm trying to I'm, have I'm some real right absolutely. here. You know, like, that, so, that's true. So sometimes that motivates you like, hey, I got to show her that I'm into her or. You know, like she's worth me having around. She feels like this. And you sometimes you feel like you, tr you have to satisfy you know, whatever type of needs or desires or that that need for that type of attention with a woman. I mean, you know, so sometimes it goes in that direction. It's not always the man who's forcing the issue. Sure, sure. I think that is important. Were you going to say something, Tony? No, I would. I would. All right. So, all right, so um, there are many things that I, I wanted to talk about, but we have to deal with this one question. Um, and that is, how do you define manhood. There are men right now who already know what your response is, uh, but this is important that I'm asking 70, 60, 31, um, is how do you define manhood? How do you define manhood and where did you get that definition or that, that image from? What makes, what, makes, what makes you a man? From, and I want your perspective, not my perspective or what you think I want to share. Yes, sir. I think all of us remember the tool man, the tool guy. Yeah. That is is uh, is about the uh, the grunt. Uh, 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 uh -huh. That's what most men uh, are, are looked at to be able to uh, uh, constant to, to really think that they're the, they're they're the the man that the woman wants them to be. But for me, uh, and it's taken a lot of years to understand this, it's being able to be soft and committed and uh, knowing what God wants me to do. Uh, it can be anything, you know, but the key thing is being able to show my heart openly. And if I get the right person in my life, which I have, then what that means to me is we'll be like-minded and I won't have to worry about the things that I did in the early years. Um, 
trying to define what manhood was, uh, what I need to really portray out in, 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 the, in the world. What was that? Hmm. What was your, your former understanding of what being a man was, was consisted of? Uh, it was manly things. Being able to fix things in the house or around the house, it was driving a, a, the kind of right kind of car. It was the image, which I think absolutely now has nothing to do with with who I am. Uh, it's when it's it's all internal. It's it's what I can give somebody uh, for the rest of my life. And uh, to me, that's that's really the undercurrent that people forget about men, especially. Is that you have to open up, but you got to do it in ways that is not uh, uh, offensive to anybody. You have to love and give, be able to give love sure. and show that love to the people that, that are around you, and that's also the people that you don't know. Sure. You know, you got to be able to portray an image that uh, that is godlike. Got you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you for that. What about you? Well, uh, as far as for me. A man wears so many hats, you know. All right. Uh, he's a leader. Uh, yep. He's a lover. Uh, he's a provider. Yep. You know, he's a nurturer. Uh, he takes care of many things, you know. There's no one one particular thing that, that as a man, that, that, that you're responsible for. There are many things. And as far as how I got to that point was... Uh, Probably watching my grandfather, my father, uh, you know, go out and work and provide for the family and, All right. and uh, you know, come home and be that guy at home that uh, when things needed to be done and fixed at home, yep. uh, the work didn't stop at work. Mm -hmm. You know, you came home to, I guess you could say, your second job. Yep. Uh, so those are kind of the things that, that I see as uh, a man. Yep. Y'all can clap. It's perfectly fine to clap. What about you? Uh, my definition of a man um, is you have to be able to represent like two polar opposites. You have to be strong, yet you still have to be a nurturer. You have to be hard, yet you still have to be soft. It's, it's always a tale of two things with a man. Uh, I feel like uh, you have to be all those cliche things, a supporter. You have to be a breadwinner. You have to be um, a leader. You have to have a vision. You got to be driven and ambitious, yet you still have to make time and be able to uh, give your family attention and, 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 like I said, be nurturing. But I think the most important thing I see for a man is you have to be a referee. You have to be a referee. You have to be an official, just like a referee at a basketball game or a football game, meaning this is God's kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody in contact or in your, uh, in your under your direct influence, uh, your du jurisdiction of influence. I like when you use that word. I mm -hmm. yeah, your ego. yeah, that's cool, cool, cool. Um, sure. But everybody under your jurisdiction of influence, I feel like you're supposed to be a referee for them. But the only way for you to be a referee is for you to actually know the rule book. Mm -hmm. If you don't know the rule book, then you can't guide others. You can't give them advice. If you watch a basketball game, you see guys walk up to the referee the entire game and they're like complaining because they're out of compliance with the rules. So you have to be able to explain to them, hey, this is why this is happening. You have to be able to give them direction. You have to let them know, just like a referee does. You got that foul call because you were hand checking. You have to let people know, hey, you, you're out of bounds right now. You're out of bounds with what God's orders are. And this is why this is happening, to be able to give people direction. That's what I feel like a man is. A man is supposed to upkeep this kingdom and be the referee to officiate the game. You know, um, as I listen to you all, and this is something that they knew I was going to ask. So, you know, they, they, ha they have all these nice, wonderful responses. Um, if I'm speaking generally on behalf of men and everything that they said, you know, has merit to it. Men were taught. And we talked about image, three things. You know, you have to be out there in the work field. You got to work, career, right? But then you have to come home and you have to provide. You have to be a protector, a provider. You know, we hear it, you know, and when women are, you know, saying all the things that they want, you know, men, we were raised and we talked about grandfather, and I know that you all know it. 
Even from antiquity, men were hunters. They had to go out, they had to risk their lives, and they had to, you know, try to, you know, make a living. And, and, and making a living and risking their lives, it, everybody was in survival mode, right? In survival mode. And it was so distinct. You had, and I was going to put those two circles up there. You knew, you knew the spears. The spears were, it, it was a circle in which you knew what the man was going to do. The man had to go out there. He had to go into the workplace out there in the field, risk his life for his family. His wife respected him because she knew that he would leave the house. He would risk his life and he's going to make sure everything is going to get taken care of. He would go out there and he would make the money. He would make the bread. He would risk his life because he had to provide for his family and she respected him because she knew what he had to go through right and so he'll go out there and it was very clear the man got his pride from the role that he played in the family he had to go out there he had to risk his life you talk about your grandfather and you all know you had to go out there and you'll come you knew the wife he respected his wife because he knew his wife was at home and she was taking care of the children she was making the house a home that's why he respected her Right. And so you have these two hemispheres. It was very distinct. It was very clear. The man had his, his identity was found in the role that he kept up. He was providing and he was protecting. It was very clear. He would go out there. He would risk his life. Many of you know your grandfathers, great grandfathers, your fathers. That's what they did. They come back home. The wife would have the food ready because she know he was or he dealt with hell while he was out there in the workplace to provide for the family. He knew that she was at home rearing the children, protecting them. It was two hemispheres spheres. They had their roles. Identity for a man came from the fact that he was able to go out there into the workplace. He was, he was able to go out there. He was protecting his family. He was providing. That was his identity. But we're here in 2018. Women can work in the workplace. They make the same, if not more money than the man does. My, my last, my, my engagement and my last relationship, both of them made more money than I did. So where guys, where men had their identity that was found in the fact that they went out and they provided and they protected the family. Women now, guess what? You got mace. <laughs> you have your arms, your firearms on you. You got your cell phone, 911. And so... Where men usually have gotten their identity and being able to provide and protect. When I meet a woman, she got her own car. She got her own house. Both of them had their own houses. They owned their own houses. I was still living in an apartment. Inside of the house, they got furniture. They got the big screen TV. Inside the refrigerator, they got food. <laughs> but yet I'm hearing everybody say, you know, I need a man to do all this. They got everything. I'm talking about today. We have to be mindful of something is that so much has shifted and we're not necessarily acknowledged because men got their identity in the fact that I can provide and protect my family or my wife. But then now today. You meet her, she can protect herself. She can provide for her own self. And so when she enters into a relationship with you, what she's saying and what many women say, if you. You have to give me a reason to want to submit to you by providing me something that I hadn't already provided the relationship. There is a conundrum. There is a conundrum that we're not acknowledging because, see, what we don't realize is that when when pops came home. There wasn't so much time for romance. There were no long walks in the park they had to get up and go to work the next day. There wasn't all, there was intimacy, but there was not a whole lot of intimacy because it was, it was survival mode. We're not in survival mode anymore, right? And so now men are trying to find their identity because you meet women and women, they, they say they want protection and they, they get all that, but now they, but what they want is passion. They want intimacy. They want connection. And for most men, we don't know what that looks like. Now, some of our newer generations, yeah, that's different, but the older generations, like, they, work was everything. I wonder why working all the time? You work all the time. You work. <laughs> and some. Right? Yes. Yes. Not to put your business out there, but I know that you take care of a lot of people. 
you look out for a lot of people. I do. That's all you know. Because you got that from your dad. You got that from your, 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 your four parents, right? Absolutely. And so the conundrum is that you got guys like him and other guys, and you meet women, they making, I married a lot of people. The wife make a whole lot more money than the man does. But for men, and we're still seeing the image, it's, it's like an image of old school and new school. It's like, but she make more than me. And then we have a conundrum because women make more than a guy, but then they're saying they want the man to provide. Women are bringing home the bacon, the, 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 the pig, and the cow. <laughs> and so we, we're, in, we're, we're insecure because we think and we have thought and we've been trained to believe that we have to provide and we have to be the breadwinner. That's the only image that we know, so that's why we're insecure. And then most women are perpetuating that by even saying, well, I make more money than him because that's what you think a man should look like. But then you also want intimacy. You want all the time. You want connection. Things that I don't even know that that's what it, I, I never see. I don't know what that looks like. And so now man has to be soft, even softer. Spend a whole lot more time. My granddad, my great granddad, I don't know this because I didn't have any of those examples. But I see images on television. And it's, a lot, it's a lot of, it's, it's baby boomers in here and can tell you what they understand, you know, manhood to be like. And our, I, their identity has come in the roles when our identity should come in our purpose. Yeah. Right? And purpose looks different for everyone. But it takes two people. It's important that we have this conversation because you have people in relationships, people in marriages, and the woman is not at home anymore. Daycare, taking care of the children, nanny taking care of the children. And so both of them are in the workplace. He's working overtime because he's trying to make as much money or trying to show that he can make as much money. And he is a man because for him, making the money is how he looks at manhood and he needs his woman to. It takes two people to have this conversation and restructure what they want their home and their relationship and the marriage to look like. Because until the woman corrects what she expects or doesn't expect, he's going to always be insecure. He may never tell you about it. He may never tell you about it, but he's insecure about it because he thinks that that's what you need in order to receive him and appreciate and approve of him. And so if he isn't bringing home the bread and, you know, you got your firearms, you got you got the security system, all the things that we didn't have 30, 40 years ago, everything looks different in the 21st century. I know you're standing up because you're saying it's time to go. We're going to keep doing what we got to do. Y'all chime in, please. Yeah, I just want to say one thing, uh, Isaac, about the family unit and responsibility of the man. Well, God calls the man to be the head of the household, mm -hmm. but submissive to his wife mm -hmm. and, and vice versa. Uh, a simple way of looking at this is looking at a corporate organization chart. You've got the CEO, which reports to the board. Well, in the family unit, the man reports to God. And he's held accountable, but he's also responsible. There's a, in my eyes, there's a, there's a lot of hats that that person wears along with his wife. Sure. Uh, he's got to be a planner. He's got to be a, a, a family planner. He's got to make sure that the finances are there. And you've talked about that, and providing for the family. Sure. He's got to be a multitude, a multitude of things, just like the CEO of a company. He's ultimately responsible for mm -hmm. what goes on. Because God, I think God is going to hold him accountable first for how the family ends up. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, that's just the most important responsibility a man of a family has mm -hmm. is to take that and do it uh, as if he were the CEO of a company, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and that's true. And I just think it's important, though, that each household looks slightly different. And I think that both woman and man boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, and wife have to have that conversation because, again, if I'm not making as much money as you, but then I'm managing finances, what does that look like? So it, it, there's a conversation that we're omitting that we're not having because the traditional sense of roles and responsibilities in marriages and in households 
doesn't look the same as it looked 20 and 30 years ago. And so if we don't have a conversation about that, then he's going to be out here working three and four jobs. Y'all don't even need the extra money, but he's trying to prove to you that he's a man because he thinks that his manhood for you, his approval and the respect, he wants your respect. So he's trying to do whatever it is that he can do to get your respect, but he doesn't know how to manage money. So if he doesn't know how to if he's not a, uh, an accountant, then, you know, that's one knock against him. So I'm saying that there's many things that we have to consider, and it's 1055. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let me say this. Um, there's a few questions that men ask themselves when they meet a woman. A man ready for commitment, he asks himself, when he meets you, he's asking himself, several questions in his head, right? He doesn't tell you, but he's asking himself these questions. Is she available? You look available, but is she available physically, emotionally? Is she crazy? <laughs> look at my face. I'm so serious. I couldn't be more serious. Is she available? Is she crazy? He wants to know this. The first sign of crazy, that man, like, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Will she approve of me? That is, is she interested in me? Most guys won't shoot their shot unless he has some idea that you're interested in him. Most guys, some guys will. Most guys will not shoot their shot unless they have some idea that you're interested in them. Is she fun? Is she kind? Now, I know you're kind around me, but are you really kind? Is she like, what is she like when I'm not around? I already told you, how much will she change after I make a commitment to her? He wants to know this. He ain't told you. I'm trying to tell you. He wants to know how much is she going to change after I make a commitment to her? What is she about? That is, what are her values? What are her boundaries? A guy may give you a hard time for your boundaries, but he will respect you because you have them. What are her boundaries? He will respect the fact that you got boundaries, even though he may seem like he give you a hard time. You got a choice to make. If you got those boundaries, he'll respect those boundaries. Will she bring out the best in me? Will she bring out the best in me? Will she support me? Does she want kids? Will she like my kids or kid? And will she satisfy me sexually? If you think a guy ain't asked himself that question, he may never tell you that. But one of the questions that he going to ask himself is, can she satisfy my sexual need? I know y'all real Christian in here today fact that I said sex and then I didn't follow it up by saying Jesus Christ and you know sex is premarital sex is you know I'm just trying to have a frank conversation with you marriage these are things that he asks himself Lord we thank you for these people who are here we thank you for this panel God we're praying that something is shared something has been said a perspective has been um, embraced that can help Help us. As men, Lord, we don't have it all right. We don't make all the right choices, decisions. Lord, help us to be better as men. I pray, God, that we receive your word not to be offended, but to receive this as enlightenment. Love on us, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let me say this to you. Men are expected to be Superman. And the thing that your, your husband or that, that guy you're dating would never tell you is that we're expected to be Superman so much that we're afraid that you won't receive our Clark Kent. We're expected to be Superman so much that we hide our Clark Kent. Because we believe that if we show you our Clark Kent, you won't receive us. There is a Clark Kent in every Superman of a man. And the question is, can you pull that Clark Kent out?
And can you embrace that Clark Kent? If you can get that Clark Kent out and you embrace that Clark Kent, I promise you, you'll have a happy relationship and marriage. In the name of Jesus, y'all be good. Amen. Just a Let's quick show our panel. Y'all. Let's show our panel. Let's show our panel. Let's show our panel how we feel about them. Tony, Rocky, and David. And everybody, next week, women, send some emails. Send some emails of some questions. No, men, men, men. Y'all send me some emails. Y'all send me some questions and stuff that, see, y'all real hard to work with, man. Send me some emails, Isaac at HopeChurchMemphis.com, so that I can present or Keisha can present to the women next week. We're going to go a little deeper and deal with the women next week. Let's show them how we feel about them. You got some announcements.